Hi, this is Kevin Trainer, and um, welcome to my tutorial on um, working with uh, Git version control. And in this uh, uh, particular tutorial, we're going to build on a couple of short tutorial videos that we did earlier today. Um, and the one we just finished, we uh, we used uh, the Windows version of the source tree client to uh, clone a repository that was on a remote Git server. Now, the the repository that we're using is one that's uh, a common one that we're using for learning here in the fall 2016 version of the um, Infos 490 class. And um, so we use the Git, um, a Git client, uh, the source tree uh, client for Windows, and we were able to clone the repository from uh, Bitbucket, where I've been keeping it, uh, down to our local machine. Okay, and so uh, here's what we have when we start. We've got uh, a copy of uh, source tree for Windows, and we have our repository, although you can't really see the whole name. Uh, it's called repo 2016 fall infos 490. And um, we are currently looking at the branch called master. And that's the only one that really counts for this one. Um, you'll see there's a bunch of other branches. And that's because some enterprising students ha have uh, decided that the changes that they make, they're going to create a new branch to make their changes on. But they've not succeeded in some cases in merging them back. OK. So what we always want to do is that we want to be working on master. And we want to make our changes. We want to commit them to master. And then we want to make sure that we properly push our changes up. So one of the first things that we're going to want to do is we want to make shop, uh, sure that we're working with a current copy of the repository content. And our local copy only has any changes that we've made. Now, we happen to, in this uh, particular task that we're doing, we happen to be uh, collaborating with all the people in these two sections of the senior capstone. That's, uh, it's about 60 people. Okay, so that, uh, there are going to be a lot of people who are going to be posting to this. So the first thing that we're uh, going to want to do is we're going to want to pull down any changes that they have successfully pushed off to the remote. So I don't see that there are any changes there. There's usually in the client, there's usually a little uh, blue dot with a number in it. But if I want to be sure, I can click on pull. And it brings up the dialog. And I'll just say OK. And it'll run. And it's loading right now. And at this point, if there were changes that somebody had pushed, now I have them here. This isn't a big issue for us because we are, at this point, not working on the same files. We all have our individual files. OK, so let's reacquaint ourselves with the files. Um, uh, what I have here is I have the um, I have the repository that I'm keeping in uh, documents. And um, when I cloned it with the um, the source tree client, uh, it used the name of the repository as the name of the directory, which is good. So this uh, directory holds my local working copy of the repository, and I open it up. And I've got an index.html page. Um, if I open that up, you'll see that on the index page, I have a list of all the students. 
uh, hopefully including you. Um, I have uh, a sample student whose uh, name is Sample Student, so I'm going to click on that. And you can see the details from their individual page. Their name is uh, Sample Student. They're a student. They're enrolled in Section 999, which doesn't really exist. Their username is Sample99, which is a phony username. And um, the original content that was here has been changed. How do I know? Well, I know what the original content was. Let's just uh, go back up to the index page and pick a student who we don't think has been changed. Hmm. Well, let's just take a guess. Who can we try? Well, let's try the first person, uh, Dylan Barter, and see if that's been changed. Oh, this one has not been changed yet. So if you look down here at the bottom of uh, Dylan Barter's um, individual page, I have a line in italics that says, each student is, is expected to add some appropriate content to this part of the page. Now, it, this is not an HTML and CSS uh, contest, eventually we're going to use the content here as a way to put information into the shared content site about ourselves and our teams and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to put some significant amount of information on yourself into this part of your individual page, well, feel free. But if for right now, all we want to do is we want to make a change. We want to be able to commit the change to our local working copy of the repository. And then we want to uh, push that change out to the remote uh, repository at uh, Bitbucket. And this, this is a nice little holding place for it. So if we go back to my um, page for uh, sample student, you'll see that I've already made a change to that uh, page. OK, so how are the files organized? Let's uh, shrink this and look at the file organization a little bit better. Um, in the top level uh, directory, we've got uh, three um, HTML pages. We have the, the famous index.html, which is uh, kind of the home page for the site that you've already seen. There's an instructor index, which has a list of the two instructor people who are working on the course. There's a team index that doesn't, it's not uh, very well populated because we haven't identified the teams yet. Um, we have a CSS uh, directory, which has our style sheet. Uh, please don't change the style sheet. If you need additional styles, then it's okay to add style sheets, style sheets uh, there. Uh, we do not have a um, it, we do not have a, a directory for images yet, but it would be nice to have one. So why don't I just um, create a new folder here for images? OK, all right. And so what can I do here? Well, I could just take that. That's a change, right? That's a change to my directory structure. So if I go back to my uh, source tree client for Windows, uh, you're going to see that if I um, I'm having a, 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 an interesting time trying to uh, trying to figure out how this client is different from the client that I'm used to. There'll be a slight pause while I find the feature. Be right back. Okay. Well, I found <laughs> I found stuff, and uh, for the most part, it's a sad story. So. Uh, just to refresh your memory, well, I had said, well, you know, we don't have a, a directory for images yet. Let's add one. 
Uh, so it did. And uh, here's the new directory images, and it's empty. And when I go back to the uh, the Windows source tree client, I don't seem to have any uncommitted changes. And that's because if you just add an empty directory in this uh, version of the client, the Windows version, um, it doesn't sense that there's a change. And so um, you cannot just add an empty directory, apparently, uh, which you can in the, uh, the Mac version. Uh, so interesting, huh? So how do we solve that? Well, um, the way I, I can solve that in the short run will be this. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to uh, create some uh, file. So let's uh, let's create a uh, where's accessories Windows accessories and let's find uh, our old friend WordPad. Okay, and then let's. Uh, Let's try some, uh, which to say this is a phony uh, image file that really has the wrong uh, type. It is a .txt file. Okay. Okay, and then we'll save it. Let's say file. Uh, save as um, plain text document and let's go to document go to the repository go to images and the file name we're going to call it uh, phony placeholder image okay and now we're going to save it and yes, I just wanted in a text only format. Okay, so let's just take a look at what we have here. Uh, now, if we go down and we look at that, well, we do, we have a token file in here. So uh, let's uh, shrink that file explorer and come back and take a look at the, um, the source tree Windows client. And oh, look, right at the top, we have uncommitted changes. Very nice. So how are we going to do with that? Well, let's go down here. We have unstaged files. OK, so unstaged files are just their files that have changed um, that we haven't uh, staged yet. And why do we stage them? Well, we stage them to become part of a commit. OK, so let's do a commit just for this. OK, so as you can see, we're adding both the directory and the file in the directory at the same time. That's the way we do it in this Windows uh, version. So, OK, so we have one stage file. So when we click on the uh, commit toolbar icon up here, well, uh, that's what's going to be in the commit, anything that's been staged. OK, so I'm, I'm just going to say add uh, images directory to shared content um, directory trees and add a token file so that change is recognized by source tree windows client okay and let's commit that okay and you can see that we're um, one ahead here okay and we can also see uh, okay, okay so we've got one commit that is ready to be pushed 
Um, it looks like there aren't any changes on the remote copy of the repository, the one at uh, Bitbucket. But of course, if you want to be sure, you can always do this. Okay, let's uh, pull from the remote. Okay, now we're sure to have a, 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 uh, an up-to-date copy. And then let's turn right around and push our uh, commit up to the remote. Let's say push. And now we are up to date. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Now let's do the real work that we came here to do. And what's that? Well, the real work that I came here to do was to show you how to change your individual page. Okay. So let's uh, find the individual page for my phony student. And my phony student's login ID is sample 99. So I'm going to take that, right click on it and say open with and in this case I'm just going to use WordPad okay and uh, let's see I've got uh, two sentences in a paragraph so let's just um, let's just add another paragraph okay so uh, P uh, we are adding another paragraph uh, to show that we can NP, right? Okay, that's fine. So we're going to save this and we're going to close it. And now when we go back to the um, source tree client, we should see that we have uncommitted changes. And again, we've only been working on the master branch, all these other little interesting things that happened on other branches. Well, they're not our problem. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's, uh, uh, let's uh, click on this line with the uncommitted changes. Okay. And we can see that there's been a change to students sample 99. And let's highlight that file name. And now we're going to see the diff over here on the right hand side. And you can see that we have, uh, we have a line in green where we've added our third paragraph line. Okay, that's great. That's just the change that we want to be making. So what things do we do? Well, we want to commit. Uh, okay, how do we get something into a commit? Well, first we stage it. Okay, and again, why do we use staging? It allows us to commit less than all of the outstanding changes. Okay, so had we changed uh, 10 files and we had done really three different kinds of changes, we could stage the first group, do a commit with the appropriate uh, um, message for the commit, which is a kind of comment on the work we've done. Then we could take the second group, stage them, commit them, and then we could take the remainder, uh, stage them, and uh, commit them. Um, when you're when you're doing uh, your commits, you're committing little pieces of work uh, early and often. Well, you might only be staging one or two files at a time. They may be the only changed files. So you may say, well, why do we need staging? Well, we need staging for when we fall behind on our commits and we want to sort that out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got that staged. Let's go up to the toolbar, say we want to commit. Okay, and uh, uh, change sample student HTML file um, during video demo. Okay, and let's click on commit. And we have a commit. So we are one ahead here in our local copy of the repository compared to the remote copy of the repository. And again, it's showing us that we are able just to push because we don't have anything to pull. Uh, all right. And just uh, remember, 
what we're doing right now, we are only working on our own individual files. So no matter what anybody else changes, okay, uh, we should not um, have a conflict with them. So the easiest way to not have to be resolving uh, conflicts is always pull before you push, just to be sure. And then turn around and push. And if it turns out that somebody else successfully pushed is sort of in between those two, well, then you're just going to have to repeat that cycle. Okay, so then our changes are out on the remote um, copy on the uh, Bitbucket server, and they're available to everyone. All right. So that's it for being able to do this assignment. Pretty straightforward stuff. In future assignments, we're going to make some other changes to this whole shared content site. We're going to uh, put the shared content site up on our uh, uh, own web server, and we're going to do stuff like that. But for today, we had pretty modest goals. So I'm hoping it all worked for you as well as it worked for me. And I'm going to say bye until next time. Bye-bye.